To formulate a probability model, one first has to define a measurable space. A measurable space consists of uh, the sample space, which contains all elementary outcomes, designated by a sigma, and a sigma algebra or algebra of subsets of the sample space, which is the set of all events. We define a sigma algebra because not all uh, subsets of omega in certain cases are, um, are um, uh, well-defined events. OK, so let's um, give some examples for the sample space omega. For example, consider the experiment of co tossing a coin twice. In each toss, we get heads or tails. OK, in that case, all possible outcomes are heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. Okay, this is a finite sample space. In some experiments, the uh, sample space is not finite but has a countably infinite number of outcomes. For example, think of tossing a coin until uh, we get heads. Um, okay, so in that case, the sample space, let's say, let's call it omega 2, will be sequences that end in heads, okay? So it could be heads and then stop, or tails, heads, or tails, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and so on indefinitely. This is a countably infinite sample space. In uh, some other cases, the sample space uh, is going to have an uncountable number of elements. For example, suppose I am choosing a point at random uh, inside the, this circle. Suppose it's a unit circle, um, and I pick a point at random, uniformly at random. Okay, So in this case, um, the sample space is a region of uh, R2, and elements of the sample space are ordered pairs x, y, where um, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. All right. So um, in order to uh, uh, measure probabilities of events, we need to first characterize events. And we, as I said, f will be uh, the set of all events. Now, um, f is going to be an algebra. Um, an algebra, f, uh, is a class of subsets of uh, omega. Okay, so F is a class of subsets of omega, <coughs> and it is an algebra if the following uh, three things are satisfied. Number one, um, omega is an element of F. Okay. Two, uh, if a set A is in F, then A complement must be in F too. Okay. So it's closed under complementation. And thirdly, if A and B are in F, then A union B. Uh, must be in F. Okay, but from two and three, you can easily see that if A and B are in F, then A intersection B must also be in F. Why? Because A intersection B is nothing but the complement of A union B, A complement union B complement. Okay. So A intersection B is in F as well. Okay, so with these three properties, the class of subsets of omega is an algebra. But more often, especially when we deal with continuous sample spaces, we will need more than an algebra. We will need F to be a sigma algebra. Okay, so, um, so we need to extend these three uh, things, three uh, uh, requirements, to include a countable number of unions or intersections. 
okay, in other words. Um, so, um, so we will require that if AI is a sequence of sets in omega, where i takes uh, positive integer values, let's say, um, then the infinite union AI um, is required to be in F. Then F is a sigma algebra and you can show that in, uh, countable intersections are also included in F. All right, so now we have our uh, measurable space omega f. Uh, let's see, so let's um, uh, give some examples of um, sigma algebras, for example, for these three experiments. Let's begin with this one, okay. Uh, we could have, for example, empty set and the sample space as a sigma, as an algebra, okay. We don't even need to say sigma algebra because it's a finite um, <coughs> sample space. Right, so this would be valid. Another valid um, algebra for this omega one would be, mm, let's see, a empty set omega h h t t um, H T T H. This is also fine. It satisfies the uh, one, two, and three. Why? Um, because well, these two elements, uh, these two sets, have no intersection, and their union is omega. So this is a uh, closed ring, if you will. It's a, actually, an algebra is a ring with identity. Why? Uh, because um, the identity is omega, omega a or a intersection omega is always equal to a. So this is a ring with an identity. Okay, uh, some of you may be familiar with the concept of a ring. Right, now, um, however, what is, so what is the difference between these two valid sigma algebras, uh, these two valid algebras? Well, uh, one of them, contains less detail than the other. For example, if we ask the question, um, you know, did the event um, of getting, um, you know, two of the same face occur or not? Um, and that would be the event, um, uh, T T H H. This event is a valid event in two, but it is not a, a valid event in F1. Okay, so F2 contains enough detail to give us information about this event. On the other hand, on the other hand, if the event uh, we're looking for is um, getting at least one tail, getting at least, you know, having at least one of the outcomes uh, be tails, uh, then uh, F2 is not uh, going to give us uh, information either because uh, the event at least one tails is, the, is this set, um, T, 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 H, H, T, and this is not in F2. So in order to describe this event, we would need a more detailed sample space. Um, I'm sorry, more detailed algebra. So we could define F3 as, for example, the set of all subsets of omega. And this is frequently uh, the case when we deal with uh, a finite uh, omega like this. Uh, it's easiest to have uh, the algebra F to contain all the possible events, uh, um, which would be the set of all subsets, uh, which has uh, size <coughs> to the, the 
to the, the, the size of the set, in this case 60. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, this was an algebra, all, the, all of these things were algebras. Let's give an important example of a sigma algebra, and that is going to be <coughs> the Borel sigma algebra. Um, <coughs> let's define the Borel sigma algebra on the unit interval 0 to 1. Okay. Now, the Borel sigma algebra uh, is very common and it is the smallest sigma algebra um, containing all intervals A, B, uh, where A and B are between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, as this is a sigma algebra and it contains all intervals, okay, you can easily show that it contains all points as well because you can always get an individual point uh, using an infinite intersection, um, let's see, and from 1 to infinity, um, A minus 1 over N, uh, B. And this would give us, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this would, um, f first let me get the closed interval. Or, or we, could, you know, we could always do this. Yeah, let, let me first get the closed interval, half closed. Okay, you can always get a closed interval this way. And uh, we can always um, uh, get um, points A because A is nothing but um, the difference. Um, so, well, A you could obtain by, again, taking an inter infinite intersection uh, of um, a minus 1 over n comma a because we also already knew how to, we already got half closed intervals. Okay, and then of course you can obtain a closed interval by combining a point with and half open interval, etc. So basically, the Borel sigma algebra on 0 to 1 contains all uh, intervals, half open, half closed, all points, all uh, countable unions of intervals. And it is, for practical purposes, uh, enough uh, detail uh, to measure um, events of interest. Um, now, uh, with this, we have learned how to define a measurable space. Next time, we'll um, talk about uh, probabilities and how to define a probability space. <coughs>